Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back. In the last segment, we discussed uh, two anthropometric principles, design for the maximum dimension and design for the minimum dimension. And this segment, we will discuss the third principle that is design for a range. And the problem of designing to suit a range of users can be approached in several different ways. We will discuss two. That is, first one is uh, make different sizes and second one is to, to make adjustable products. So make different sizes means uh, to make same product in several different sizes. So this principle applies, for example, to the design of clothing as well as uh, to, to the furniture design. So anthropometric data can be used to determine a minimum number of different sizes. So for example, in the case of uh, clothing, we may decide, let's suppose four sizes, small, medium, large, extra large. And once we have decided uh, uh, the number of sizes, in this case four, we have to then decide the quantity uh, of each size to be produced. So clothing sizing uh, systems divide a variable population into roughly homogeneous subgroups. It is assumed that members of a subgroup are a single size and shape so that a single garment can fit everyone in the group. So for example, if we are deciding the medium size, for example, so we, we define the dimensions that actually appear uh, in the medium size uh, clothing. So there will be different people who will be using this say medium sized shirt. And we are assuming that those people have the same body size and shape, but that is not actually the true uh, practically. But we have to make sure that that product has such dimension that, that it is suitable for the people in that uh, subgroup. So this is a big assumption that we are taking and we have to make sure that uh, this assumption is actually uh, is satisfied uh, um, using the design of the clothing or furniture, whatever is the product that we are uh, we are offering. So just as we just uh, discussed that this principle applies to clothing and furniture specifically. So if we take the example of casual shirts, so let's suppose we decide different sizes in this case and then we decide actually the critical dimensions uh, that are important for that product so for example chest sleeve length collar and front length are found to be the critical dimension in the case of shirts so then for for each category of sizes we we decide the dimension of these variables so for example for small size chest is to be uh, say 42 uh, the sleeve length is to be uh, 25, the collar is to be 14 and a half, and front length is to be is to be 30. And same you can see for the other sizes as well. Uh, so we are assuming that a certain subgroup in the population uh, will be using this product uh, of small size, this shirt of small size, uh, or this shirt of small size will be suitable for all people in that subgroup. So it is very important to decide these number of sizes that are five in this case. Secondly, the dimensions that will determine each size. And once we, we talk about the production, the quantity of each uh, size is also important to be decided. So this is just an illustrative example that was shared by a couple of my students. Uh, to illustrate this concept of make different sizes. So suppose we, we have a door that further has three sizes. So for example, uh, and each door actually then has uh, the door handle at sort of uh, middle of that door. So let's suppose the smaller door is, is suitable for, for, for the kids this uh, second door and that has uh, uh, relatively 
larger height as compared to the first one is say suitable for for the taller kids or the adults with average height and this third door uh, is suitable for the taller people and you can also notice the the position of this handle so it is very obvious that it is according to the shorter user in that specific subgroup so it is not too high it is a sort of at the middle uh, of the door so that if a shorter person can reach it it won't be a problem for a taller person but this is just an illustrative example uh, that if you make different sizes of the same product then a certain subgroup for example kids in this case for the shorter door and uh, taller kids or the people or adults with average or above average height uh, can use the second height the second size and taller people can use the the third door but this this is just an illustrative example the second option to design for a range of people is to design adjustable products so again here we, we, we will first identify the dimensions of the product then relevant anthropometric dimensions and thirdly here we also need to define uh, the critical dimensions that are that are to be adjusted by the users so not all dimensions of the product are critical from a adjustability, adjustability point of view so here we, we we need to identify the critical dimensions as well so we may sometimes need training in order to in order to uh, get the user familiar with the mechanism of uh, adjustability so now we will again take the example of seated work and we will consider two dimensions height of the seat and height of the desk uh, actually the example that we will see in the next slide will focus on the site of uh, it only but the basic idea here is that uh, there can be uh, two adjustable features in in the same product as well so we can have the seat to be adjustable we can uh, height of the seat to be adjustable we can have the height of the desk to be adjustable and we can have both of these dimensions to be adjustable as well so the principle we have already seen that the seat height should be no higher than the popliteal height of the of the shorter user and uh, same applies to the height of the desk as well but the problem here is that uh, we are dealing with two anthropometric dimensions to design this product that is uh, the the popliteal height as well as the elbow height so ideal case in this uh, in this situation would be to make both these heights uh, both corresponding heights of the of the furniture so for example seat height and desk height both these uh, dimension both these heights to be adjustable so seat height depended upon popliteal height and this desk height on elbow height so there are two dimensions of the product that are important so we can make either of them adjustable but ideally both can be made adjustable so the greatest reduction in dis uh, discomfort are found when two adjustable items are used in combination so if you make in this case both seat height and desk height adjustable uh, it will be most comfortable for the users so a simple case of anthropometric design if you are going to design for a range the fifth percentile female and 95th percentile male measures are illustrated in this figure so for example if we are going to make the height of the seat adjustable so we will take the fifth percentile female popliteal height and 95th percentile male popliteal so minimum adjustability of of the chair in this specific example would be 36 uh, 36 inches sorry 36 centimeters and the maximum range of adjustability will be 49 centimeters 
So from fifth percentile value for females to 95th percentile uh, value for the males. And we will be able to accommodate more than 95% people because the fifth percentile female is shorter than the fifth percentile male, right? And similarly, 95th percentile female is shorter than the 95th percentile male. So in this range, by considering uh, the range of adjustability from the fifth percentile uh, female to the 95th percentile male, we are actually also accommodating, say, the uh, fifth percentile male on this side and 95th percentile female on this side. So this adjustability from 36 to 49 centimeter will be actually accommodating more than 95% people in their population because we are considering a mixed population. This is a general product, so both male and females will be using. The same principle can apply for the height of the desk if we want to make it adjustable. So range of ad adjustability will be from a fifth percentile female to 95th percentile male. So say in this case from, from 54 centimeter to 78 centimeters. So more than 98 95% more than 95% people in the population will be accommodated and it would be ideal if you make both the height of the chair as well as desk adjustable. So let's solve a couple of examples quickly. So the first example is that we have a workbench that has a range of adjustability from 41 to 47 inches. What percentage of the male US population is accommodated? Assume work is done at standing elbow height. So again, the dimension of the product is the height of the workbench. The relevant anthropometric variable is the standing, standing elbow height. So we know the uh, uh, dimension of the product, feature of the product and its dimension and relevant anthropometric variable. And we are now going to design for, for that just, uh, so we are not going to actually design, we are going to, uh, we are going to evaluate what percentage of people in this population uh, can use this um, product comfortably. So we need the data on the average elbow height and standard deviation. So we are assuming a perfectly normal distribution. So mean is assumed to be equal to median. We also have the standard deviation. So first step has been done. We, we have found the mean and standard deviation of relevant anthropometric variable. That is the elbow height in this case. Then we have to find the Z value for upper and lower adjustments. So we had this formula uh, that Z is equal to minus X bar over standard deviation. So for the lower adjustment, X is 41 X bar or mean is 43.5 standard deviation is 2.1. So Z is found to be minus 1.19. From Z table, we can uh, we can look up that this minus 1.19 uh, equals uh, how much area under the curve? So that is minus 1.19 is equal to 11.70 percent. 11.70 percent. Similarly, we can find the Z score for the upper adjustment that was 47 inches, so Z score is 1.67. So the corresponding area against 1.67 is 1.61234567. So that is 95.25%, uh, 95.25%. So, so the question remains that for what percentage of uh, people in this population this uh, workbench is, is suitable? So first Z value was uh, minus 1.19 somewhere over here, minus 1.19.
and the second was 1.67 somewhere over here minus 1.19 actually corresponded to x of 41 or x of 41 or z minus uh, z is again given minus 1.19 and this z of 1.67 actually corresponded to x is equal to 47. So the question is the question is what percentage of people can easily use this workbench? So against minus 1.19 we had an area of 11.70%. So this area to, to the left of this uh, minus 1.19 one nine is eleven point seven zero percent. So let's call it area area A. The second value was one point six seven against uh, adjustability of forty seven inches. So this area actually uh, to the left of this point would be uh, ninety five point. Two five percent, so area B. So this ninety five point two five percent is against a height of forty seven, but this ninety five point two five percent also includes uh, the height of forty one. So that is important to understand here. So this B is ninety five point two five percent, and that is for for height of forty seven, but this also includes height less than or equal to 41. So this was the point for 41 inches height. So this Z value 1.67 also includes the area for height 41 or less than 41. But we are interested to find uh, the area between 41 and 47 inches that is z minus 1.19 and 1.67 so we are actually interested to find uh, this area so let let's call it area c because this workbench won't be suitable for people in area a that that have a standing elbow height less than 41 as well as for the for the people who who are in this area that have height uh, greater than 47 inches. So this area C will be equal to B minus A. So that will be equal to 95.25 minus 11.70. So that will be equal to uh, 83. Point double five percent so we have found this area c so from this minus 1.19 that was corresponding to x41 to this uh, 1.67 z value of 1.67 that corresponding uh, cor corresponded to x47 so from 41 to 47 inches there are 83 point double five percent people that have elbow height in this range. So that is the summary said so that this product is comfortable for 83.55 percent people. So let's solve another example. A workbench is to be designed that accommodates first to 99 percentile of male US population. The work is to be done at standing elbow height. What should be the range of adjustability? So again, the workbench or relevant <coughs> product I mentioned is the height of the workbench. The relevant anthropometric variable is standing elbow height again. But here we we are given the percentile values first to 99, and we have to found, find corresponding x values x for lower adjustability and x for higher adjustability so these two values were given in the previous example and we had to find area under the curve the percentile values here we have to do just the opposite 
So again, elbow height is the variable of interest. We have the mean and standard deviation values from the table. So we use the same formula. So we will just rearrange. So we, we need uh, the corresponding Z value in this case for first, first percentile. So we have to look for 1% area. So that is over here. That is against a Z value of minus 2 point. This is exactly more accurate. We can take either of these two values, but minus 2.33 is more closer. So we will take Z minus 2.33 and we will find X against first percentile value to be 38.61 inches. And as the normal distribution is uh, symmetric, so Z against uh, 99th percentile will be plus 2.33. So the value of uh, the elbow height again for, for the 99th percentile is uh, 48.39 inches. So we have got the two values, the lower adjustment and the upper adjustment. So to, to have some reasonable values, we decide the range of adjustability to be 38.5 to 48.5 inches. So if we design a, a workbench that has lower adjustability 38.5 and the upper 48.50, approximately 98% people in the population will be accommodated. So, in this part C of the lecture, we, we discussed uh, three important anthropometric principles designed for maximum dimensions, designed for minimum dimensions, and designed for a range. And we specifically discussed uh, design for adjustability uh, against the third principle. So if you have any questions, you can ask. We will solve some, some practice questions uh, during we will solve some practice questions during um, practice session. Thank you.